Hi Theory students! Today we're going to start the first part of the chapter on diatonic sequences. In this video cast, we're going to cover the basic concepts that are explained in the beginning of chapter 19. The first thing we need to understand is that a sequence is a musical idea that is immediately restated one or more times, each time transposed up or down a consistent interval from the previous statement. Let me write a sequence for you and you'll see what I mean. Here is a theme in D major. Suppose I take this now down a step and I do it again one more time. I need to end the phrase so I could do something like this. I'll use the same rhythmic motive, but I'll do something entirely different melodically that would lead to a half cadence here. So let me play the whole phrase now. a half cadence. Okay, so here are a few of the basic concepts. The sequence pattern itself is one measure long. Sequence patterns are generally half a measure, one measure, two measures, sometimes even longer, but they generally fit within the pattern of the meter. The sequence pattern, and sometimes we call it a segment, the sequence pattern is heard again and is heard again. So here's the original hearing of it. It's restated a step lower and it's restated a step lower than that. It is not restated here even though this is related motivically because of the rhythm, but the melodic pattern is different. Okay, so notice, by the way, that when I say it went down a step, from F-sharp to E is a step, from E to D is a step, but the intervals in it, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, are different in each segment of the sequence. This is a characteristic that we refer to as a diatonic sequence because in that diatonic sequence we follow the notes of the D major scale. We don't adjust over here to make a half step and whole step the way we did there. We let the D major scale dictate where the half steps and whole steps are. This is as opposed to a real sequence, which would have been something like this. If it sounds a little odd, it's because it doesn't sound like it's really staying in D major. The diatonic sequences are the most common ones that we'll be seeing and the ones we'll study in this chapter. When we have a sequence, Usually one or two restatements, or in other words, three hearings of the pattern, is enough. There are sometimes sequences that are longer than that, but it could get tedious if you do much more. 
The interval of transposition, as I said, is the distance that the entire sequence pattern is moved each time. So going back to this pattern, the interval of transposition is down a step. So that interval will have a direction, up or down, and it will have a number, in this case down a second. What I demonstrated to you is a melodic sequence because we're dealing strictly with the melody. What are the other possibilities? The other possibilities for a sequence would be what we call a linear intervallic pattern or lip. That's a fancy name, but I'll show you what it is. And that's a consistent set of intervals between bass and melody from pattern to pattern. Let's go back to our sequence and I'll show you what I mean. Here, <clears throat> let me bring in a bass line. And now, what I'm going to do is Go down the scale, So what we get as a result and on from there. So what happens as a result is the interval now is a tenth and a fifth and a tenth and a fifth, and a tenth, and a fifth. <clears throat> so that's the linear intervallic pattern, or lip. In this particular case, 10, 5, 10, 5, 10, 5. It doesn't have to be a pair of intervals. For example, I can do something like this. And keep it tense all the way. or something like that. The next concept is that sometimes we can have a harmonic sequence where the root motion of the chords forms a pattern that's also transposed. Most harmonic sequences consist of a pair of chords in each pattern. That way when the chords move by a certain interval up or down, we don't get parallels from chord to chord. You'll see what we mean when we write more of these things out. So here we are back at our example, and let me change the bass notes here. So suppose it's a first inversion chord, and that's a first inversion chord, and that's a first inversion chord. So we've got one, four, six, 
seven, three six, six, two six. So note over here, each one measure pattern from here to here, the chords are down a step. From here to here, the chords are down a step. Or another way to look at it is I keep repeating descending fifths. One, four, seven, three, six, two. We would expect five and one in the next measure. something like that. Notice in this particular case we have all three of these things going for us. We've got a melodic sequence, we've got a linear in intervallic pattern, the 10-6, 10-6, and we've also got a harmonic sequence of descending fifths from chord to chord. It's common for several of these elements, the melodic sequence, the linear intervallic pattern, the harmonic sequence, to all happen together in the same pattern. It's possible for a melodic sequence to be recognizable even if there's a little bit of embellishment. So let's take our familiar pattern here. And let's embellish it a little bit with a passing tone. And now I'm going to put an appoggiatura in it. and make a credential pattern. So now listen to the whole phrase with embellishments. You can still recognize the sequence from segment to segment even with a little bit of embellishment. That's all we're going to cover today. More about this in part two.